Welcome back, everybody. I hope you guys are all doing fantastic. In this video, I want to talk to you guys about why I keep telling you guys to stay ultra bullish on Cosmos, aka Adam. I want to share with you guys just one because I have many reasons why you should remain bullish and I'll share with you those reasons throughout these coming weeks. But in today's video, I want to share with you guys just one reason why you should remain ultra bullish for Adam, aka Cosmos. That is what's happening soon on the Osmosis DEX. Now, if you guys don't know what Osmosis is, like I said, it's a DEX or decentralized exchange. It's an AMM built on the Cosmos SDK or with the Cosmos SDK. Um, what they have been doing on Osmosis to me already is just mind blowing. Some of the features that they have on this uh, decentralized exchange is just so cool and so different and so unique compared to so many other DEXs that are out there right now that I just think people are just missing. I just flat out, I'll say it, are missing the boat. They're missing out 100% on the gains, on the, on the, on the potential profits that is happening right now with Osmosis, guys. Mark my words. Mark my words, Osmosis will be a top five DEX here soon. Mark my words, mark my words, I'm telling you. Go ahead, clip it, clip it. I said it, yeah, that's right, I said it. One of the biggest things that's gonna be happening here shortly for Osmosis is super fluid staking. Now, I'm gonna let the devs themselves talk about it and tell you what's so cool about super fluid staking and why you should be ultra bullish, not only on Osmosis, but the entire Cosmos ecosystem by sharing with you guys a clip that I took from today's convention uh, that they were hosting uh, uh, for Cosmos. Uh, and I just want you guys to sit back, buckle up, maybe get yourself some popcorn and a drink and soak in all this knowledge because like I said a million times, you guys are sleeping on what's happening within the ecosystem for Cosmos. This is called Superfluent Staking. I'm going to let them take it away. All right. Bringing up our next uh, speaker. Um, he's probably one of the dexiest men that I know, hands down. Um, Wasmington. I mean, Sonny Agarwal. <laughs> All right. Hey, guys. Uh, my name is Wasmington. Uh, no, I'm just joking. Or am I? Um, but no, my name is Sunny Agarwal. I'm one of the co-founders of Osmosis. Um, it's, uh, in, in case you haven't heard of it yet, it's a DEX in the Cosmos ecosystem, and we are building the best DeFi DEX possible uh, for the entire interchain. And to do this, we have a number of sort of features and things that we're building towards. And the one that I'm sort of most excited for right now, or one of the many ones, but you know, one of them is something called superfluid staking, which I'd like to share with you all today. So um, let's walk through what is, you know, why do we want to do superfluid staking? What, let's start with a story. So here we have Alice, or maybe it's the SIF chain mascot, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but you know, Alice went ahead and received her like amazing airdrop. Uh, of Osmo, and now she's like has to decide what does she do with it. So, option one, she sees the staking pools, right? And they have you know a certain APR, and she's like, wow, that's some really nice APR right there. <laughs> but then she notices, wait, there's also these amazing liquidity pools as well that have even higher APR. And you know she's gonna do the the rational thing and deposit her Osmo in the liquidity pools. But this has a problem, right? Because you know, what we have here is you'll notice that like on Osmosis, the staking rate is much lower than it is on many Cosmos chains. It's only 28.37%. To be honest, I don't think that's actually an issue. I, I think the percentage is not as important as the absolute amount, like the economic value that's staked. But still, it'll be nice to raise that percent and more importantly, raise the economic value that's staked. So how would we do this? What if we had a way of making it so that she could both LP and stake at the same time? Well, isn't this what liquid staking does, or AKA staking derivatives? Well, yes. What, what is staking derivatives? Let's figure that, let's see what that is first. Right? Staking derivatives is this world where Alice will go ahead and deposit her Osmo into staking pools, and she'll get back some staking derivative asset. And then she can she you'll notice she can't actually put it in the Osmo pool just yet, right? Because you know that's not an Osmo, that's some staking derivative asset. But you know, imagine we have some sort of pool for S Osmo, staked Osmo, and she can go ahead and deposit that in the pool, 
And now she'll be earning the rewards of both of these. But the, you know, first of all, we have to go create this S Osmo pool, and we'll split our liquidity across Osmo and staking derivative Osmo. Um, and in general, you know, I, you know, this is a little bit, you know, I, I like to poke the bear a little bit, but you know, I, I think that can we do something better? So. Why do we want to do something better? Let's figure out what's the issue with staking derivatives. So to do this, we have to go all the way back. Let's start with proof of stake 101. What is the goal of proof of stake? So, well, what would be nice, here's an ideal version of proof of stake. You have a, a character, Wasmington, coming along, and they can take their Osmo and drop it into the staking pool, and they get to become a validator. You know, validators are very fancy. They all get top hats. Um, and the, the, the validator can then go ahead and start making blocks, good blocks, great, but what if the validator is evil, right? They make, an, they make a, a toxic block, right? Well, what would be nice is, you know, the, the red alert should go off immediately, and, uh, you know, we get the validator slash, we burn their money, and everyone's happy. But that's not how it actually works. What actually happens is how, how you know, just the nature of how tenement consensus works is we have to rewind back to this where the validator doesn't actually make a toxic block on the chain immediately. They make a toxic block on the side, they go and share that with a bunch of people and get them sick or you know, confuse them or you know, think they're on the wrong chain, steal their money or whatever. And meanwhile, the main chain is going along the whole time and no one's noticed yet. And I, what needs to happen is someone needs to report the evidence to the main chain and only then do the warning signs go off and the validator gets uh, slashed. So, but what's the issue? So what happens then if uh, the validator, as, as soon as they make the toxic block, they take out their Osmo and just run away? Um, then we go ahead and you know, we'll make the blocks, someone reports the evidence, and we'll notice that, wait, there's no Osmo to burn, the Osmo is gone. So what did we do to solve this? I, this is actually one of like, you know, Jay's biggest innovations, right? He basically invented the idea of unbonding periods. So unbonding periods basically say, you know, let's rewind back. They've made the toxic, they, they made the toxic block, they try to unbond, they're not allowed to, right? Because we have this unbonding period. And during that time, you know, he can't get their Osmo out, he's very worried now. Uh, we start making the blocks, and the evidence comes in, and great, we get, a, we get a slash the validator. Awesome, that's great. But why do staking derivatives break this now, right? Let's rewind again. So the validator goes ahead and takes their Osmo, puts it in the pool, but they get back this staking derivative, right? Now they can go ahead and start making these blocks, and they you know, made the toxic block, got everyone sick, but now what if immediately what they do is they take their uh, staking derivative, there's a, you know, this S Osmo pool that we talked about, they can just go ahead and sell the Osmo immediately, take out a bunch of you know, whatever asset, and just run away with the money, right? Now, who's left holding the, uh, this like staking derivative asset? It's you know, Alice, who was the LP in that pool. And so you know, blocks will go on, the evidence comes in, and the val everything gets burned, right? But you know, look, it's Alice, the one that, was, like, that got her money burned. And like, this is a terrible world. Look, we have like, fi Hellfire, we Alice is crying, we have sick people, staking derivative is bad. So what is the solution? Super fluid staking. It also used to be called reverse staking derivatives, but Tarun informed me that it, that is the most tradfi name he's ever heard, so we had to come up with something a little bit more DeFi native. Um, but what is, how does it work? It says, what if we do this in the other direction, the reverse direction of normal staking derivatives? What if Alice takes her Osmo paired with some other asset, let's say ions, um, drops them into the pool, and then what she gets back is an LP share. But you'll notice that this LP share has economic value to it, and it has, more importantly, it has Osmo underlying value to it. So what if she could actually go ahead and stake the LP share itself, and the chain might be can be smart enough to actually know that, hey, this LP share is worth one Osmo underlying it. Like, you could use that LP share to unbond one Osmo. And, you know, the nice thing about this is it follows all the same rules of normal staking. If she tries to withdraw, it gets frozen, has to wake the unbonding period, and only then does she get her LP share back. So we don't break the security model of proof of stake like we do in traditional staking derivatives. Um, and how do we value these LP shares? You know, 
you just have to have a mechanism that on some regular cadence, whether it's once an hour or once a minute, uh, you, you know, you just need to be able to say how much Osmo is backing this LP share. So if a trader comes in, you know, right now it's one Osmo, but if they make a swap and, you know, it changes, it's fine. We can just, on some regular cadence, we can just keep on updating the value of these LP share. So, you know, you'll, you'll go ahead and stake an LP share. Your voting power might fluctuate as like, you know, the amount of Osmo in the pool fluctuates. But as long as the chain can do this, we're all good. So some notes, um, you know, one, obviously don't use the spot price because that could be easily manipulatable. You want to use some sort of time-weighted average price. Um, technically, you should be using the historical time-weighted average price uh, because, you know, if a, sla if a misbehavior happened at a time in the past, you know, you want to slash the amount of Osmo they had staked at the historic time, not at the current time. But, you know, technical details. If you want to learn more, you know, you can find us afterwards. Um, what happens to the LP shares, right? Well, you have two options. One, you can either burn them, and then you know, the liquidity gets stuck in the pool, which is cool, perma liquidity, that's great. Or you can just take the LP shares and throw them into the community pool. So you know, slashing and everything, burning works great. The economic value gets taken from the malicious person. Um, and what's cool is the other side's token acts as an economic buffer. So you know, like I said, we're only counting the Osmo side. So even if the amount of, you know, the big question is, oh, what about the IL here, right? The amount of Osmo could be changing. Um, th does that cause a security risk? It doesn't because the other side token, so in this case it was IONS, it's a 50-50 pool, you can almost treat that as a 2x like collateral ratio where um, even if the value of the Osmo, the amount of Osmo in the pool goes down, the amount of the other token will be going up. And so that, you know, that still has economic value that can be slashed and like used to secure the system. Um, and of course, you know, governance needs to whitelist the pools. You can't, you know, I can't just go make sunny coin that I can mint infinite of, of and then put it in a share and then, you know, I immediately just go mint infinite sunny coin and just drain the pool of the Osmo. So, you know, there's a little bit of permissionness here where governance has to like whitelist to make sure that like the counterparty token is, you know, not a shit coin. Um, and what's really cool is I think that this can actually be generalized to any DeFi protocol. Right, like you know, we obviously we're designing it for like staking derivatives uh, for um, LP shares because that's what Osmosis is about. But you can actually probably do this with anything, you know, lending protocols, option, pro really anything with lockable collateral. Can you use the DeFi protocols collateral to actually uh, stake it? So you know, in collateral in like lending protocols, you have the C tokens. Maybe you can do superfluid staking with the C tokens. So why do we want to use this? So, you know, we have these, like, many staking protocols. You know, I saw Vasily somewhere in the room earlier. Uh, you know, you have things like Lido, which do s liquid staking. And they're, like, you know, built on these, like, protocols like Ethereum. And I think they work great for um, these, like, generalized chains where, you know, you have a generalized chain, you have a staking protocol, but Ethereum has no knowledge of the applications built on top of it. And so, you know, something like Lido works great. But we're in a world of application-specific blockchains in Cosmos where the blockchain knows about the applications on top of it. Our proof of stake protocol understands the uh, osmosis DEX that's built on top of it. And so we can actually have the proof of stake protocol make use of those assets. And so that's why we get superfluid staking. And one more thing though, we have, we, you know, we're talking about superfluid staking and application specific blockchains, but we're in Cosmos, right? We're in the interchain. So what happens when we combine these two ideas? The interchain plus superfluid. We get interfluid staking. Um, <laughs> or, you know, we can call this superfluid V2. How does it work? So Alice, she uh, has, you know, her shares in the pool. It's currently worth two Osmo and one AKT. She stakes it on osmosis, and, you know, she gets the voting power of uh, the Osmo. But what about the AKT? We sure have a lot of AKT on osmosis, don't we? What if there's a way to make use of that? So what if we had a way for osmosis to, you know, you have the Akash chain, we could let the Akash chain know over IBC and basically say, hey, by the way, you have one AKT super fluid staked on this chain, why don't you let it help secure your chain as well? And then, you know, any changes that happen, you know, let's say there's a trader, the amount of it changes, we can also just let that know over IBC as well, and we can keep that going. 
But then, you know, if Alice actually turns out to be evil, uh, and she makes a toxic block on Akash, we can go ahead and Akash can let Osmosis know over IBC, and we will slash her on Osmosis. So you're basically, you know, getting this like, um, so you know, the, it's kind of like a, it, it, it's a super. What it is is it's super fluid staking as a service, right? Where the Osmosis chain can basically say like, hey, all these assets that have like all these chains that have their assets in the Osmosis liquidity pools. You can then, you know, make use of this liquidity while helping it use it to secure your chains. And, you know, it's worth noting that, you know, this is a type of interchain staking, but it's not the only type of interchain staking, right? We have other types of well, as well, things like shared security, where the Cosmos Hub, you know, allows you to use atoms to help secure other chains. And, you know, we have um, other chains can also be using interfluid staking. So, you know, UMI is this upcoming lending protocol. You know, as I mentioned, can we, design, we can probably design superfluid staking for lending protocols as well. And so what's really cool is I think we're going to enter this world where, like, the entire Cosmos ecosystem is going to have, like, this, like, all these, like, weird liquidity sharing uh, or, or security sharing mechanisms. It's not going to be this, like, hub and spoke architecture. It's going to be this, like, mesh network of security and, like, liquidity, and it's going to be amazing. So, yes, thank you so much. Um, I, I think I have a few minutes for questions and answers, but I don't know if I'm allowed to do that, or is that a thing? Yeah, all right. Anyone have any questions? When upgrade. Uh, so, I had told people superfluid staking by end of year, but it occurs to me that it's currently November, and that is a little bit nerve-wracking. Um, but I will say superfluid staking on, like, you know, we have this like roadmap of things that we're working on osmosis, but I think superfluid staking is like the number one priority right now. What if we unstake all of them at the same time? What do you mean? Well, it would have the unbonding period, just like uh, normal. Yeah, so you're asking what happens if everyone un unstakes at the same time. Um, I mean, it's about the same thing that would happen as if uh, everyone unstakes. How is it different than what happens today? Yeah, but I think that already happens, right? If everyone unstakes their Osmo today, then it will also go to zero. It, this is just like, it's basically a way of staking Osmo in a different form, right? This is like, you know, Instead of staking your normal Osmo, it's like, hey, it's Osmo, but in LP share form, and you're staking it. But other than that, everything else works the same. You have the same unbonding periods. You have the same uh, slashing conditions. Um, otherwise, it all works the same. Yeah. Ah. Yes, but what we've actually done is we're actually merging these two modules. So we are actually modifying the Cosmos SDK staking module to make use of the, we have a module in our chain called the lockup module, which is where the bonded LP shares go. And basically, when you, what we're doing is we're merging these two modules. So uh, you just do one 14-day bond, and that will start getting you liquidity rewards. And then you can just take that pointer to that bond, and you can say, hey, this is staked to this uh, validator. Yes. Yeah. So keep in mind, interfluid staking it does require buy-in from the other chains, right? We th th we would basically have to make a client interfluid module that goes onto you know the Akash network chain, for example, so it can make use of this uh, system. Uh, wait, where? There. The time-weighted average price? Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, currently we're just using the um, one that's used in Uniswap v2. Uh, but I know Dev has, like, a lot of ideas on, like, better TWAP functions that he's working on. Hmm. We 
do have a volume weighted average price function as well, and that's one of the things that we're improving. Correct, yes. That, 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 so that, that, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to figure out how to actually price the cost of manipulation. Because really, the price of manipulation of a time-weighted average price is like the swap fee times like some you know, censorship cost, right? And so it's like we have to be able to price that somehow and that we're bound how much security we, we get from that. Basically, essentially, what you want to do is as there's more volatility, you want to like, you know, increase the, you know, you know, don't update the TWAP as fast, basically. Yeah. Uh, yes, there. They very much could. Um, uh, sorry, yes, why wouldn't people build liquid staking on top of superfluid staking? They very much could, but I think what will happen is, you know, the goal here is to provide a more secure alternative to liquid staking while giving, let's say, 90% of the value that you get from uh, liquid staking. And I think what will happen then is the chains will choose to incentivize the more secure system. So for example, on osmosis, we wouldn't put um, liquidity like, uh, rewards on the S osmo pools. We would put only put liquidity rewards on the osmo pools and try to nudge people towards the superfluid staking. And I imagine other chains would want to do the same thing because you know, from a collective perspective, they care about their own security. Yes. Um, sorry, one more time. Yes. So we'll have. I mean, we'll have a. I would love a world when we have a thousand to ten thousand Cosmos chains. Uh, that would be amazing. Yes, of course. Uh, well, what we would. We're, in our chain upgrade that we do to activate superfluid staking, govern, e governance can then go ahead and, like, you don't have to create a new pool to do this. Governance can go ahead and choose which pools. Yes. Yeah, but so, so, so basically, um, you know, we, okay, first of all, yeah, so like in osmosis, we have all these different types of pools right now. We would focus in on only, you know, at least to start off with, with only the 50-50 osmo X pools. And that way, you know, the algorithm to determine the value, underlying osmo value is very simple. You just take, you know, the TVL of the pool, divided by two, divided by the number of shares, and that's the number of osmo that's underlying it. And so, yes, you have to figure, we, you know, we have to figure out what regularity that we uh, update this. Part of it is that, you know, we're, we're going to switch to some sort of epoch staking regardless. So, you know, validator powers shouldn't be changing on a block-by-block -block basis anyways. They should be changing on, you know, maybe once a day or once every six hours or something like that. So that will make the cost of, like, getting the, um, doing that calculation easier because we don't do it regularly. Yes. Correct. Yeah. So we'll, you know, we'll have to, you know, we'll build the module, uh, the interfluid staking module, the client module, and you know, we'll distribute it and hopefully, you know, request current chains to integrate it, and hopefully, any new chain that's launching will, you know, it should hopefully become the default. So, uh, Sebastian. No, so it'll so the Osmo chain will choose like the whitelist for its own chain. It'll be a governance on chain, um, and then another pool, another chain doesn't have to, you know, the, uh, this chooses like hey Osmo AKT is allowed, Osmo XPRT is allowed, Osmo you know whatever is allowed. But the other chain, the Cost Network chain, doesn't have to know about any of the other pools. It just has to care that like hey it, which pool number is the Osmo AKT pool. I think I'm out of time. Uh, 
Thank you guys, and I'll be outside if you know, or want to come find me to find questions. Thank you. While we're still on the whole osmosis thing, will the real Wasmington from Twitter please stand up? <laughs> All right, I thought that docs was gonna be a, a lot easier, but <laughs> failure. All right, um, so before we bring on our next s speaker, uh, we just have a little, little video from our, from our friends at OmniFlex who are sponsoring the stream here. Uh, hello to all the people on the internet, hello.